School already started, but the holidays aren't too far away and maybe you didn't get a new laptop during back to school. The Surface Go came out around that time and a lot of people recommended it as a good choice for students because it's basically a cheap Surface Pro. Well, I'm a college student and I got one, so here's what I think. What laptop you have has definitely become some sort of a fashion statement in the last decade, and that's especially the case on campus. MacBooks have come to dominate this space, and at this point, it's basically American culture for kids to ask for MacBooks when going to college. Considering their unique and premium build of the magnesium tablet and the Alcantara keyboard, you'll stand out from the crowd with the Surface Go in a good way. The light and tiny build also makes the Surface Go a very portable device, so it won't make your backpack any heavier or thicker. The detachable 2-in-1 form factor can give you a very versatile experience because it can be a laptop as well as a tablet. The Surface Go is actually great as a standalone tablet because the 10-inch display is not too big or small, and the 3x2 aspect ratio makes it comfortable to use in landscape and portable orientations. With full surface pen support and decent palm rejection, you can take all your notes for your more visual lectures. And with that built-in adjustable kickstand, this is a really nice way to detox with some Netflix after a busy day. My last video was all about this tablet experience and also goes more in depth with all the specs and the small details, so you might want to go check that out before continuing with this video. In laptop mode, the kickstand gets a little complicated. It's still nice because you can adjust it to some extreme angles. This kickstand and keyboard combo is totally fine for the desk in your room, the cafe, and the library, but for those painfully small chair desks, you're limited to what angles you can set this to. And if that kickstand slips off even a little bit, the whole thing might fall down, which wouldn't be good. This isn't a problem on regular laptops because the size of the base doesn't change when you adjust the angle. This form factor is also an issue for lapability. I know how crowded school libraries can get and you might need to work on your lap sometimes. The tight cover feels super nice to type on because the soft Alcantara material is nice to rest your palms on and while the keys are smaller and less spacious than normal, there's no weirdly placed keys, they feel good to press, and you can get used to it pretty quickly. As for the touchpad, it's a tad too small, but it's accurate and you can get used to this fairly quickly as well. The cover is excellent for such a small size, but it's a little too flexible, so this along with the kickstand are kinda unstable for the lap. In terms of performance, even the cheaper Surface Go model is going to be totally fine as primary computers for students that simply need to write essays, make presentations, research and do readings. This is Windows, so it will slow down over the years, but I'm fairly confident this can last you a whole bachelor's degree if you can manage it well. However, I can only recommend this as a secondary laptop to students in fields that require more horsepower and 3D modeling, such as engineering and design. The 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage might be an issue for some, but it's expandable via microSD, and there's also OneDrive cloud storage integration. The biggest issue with the Surface Go is the battery life. It's simply not great. I've only been getting around 5 to 6 hours of use in better battery mode. That's with me turning off a ton of apps in the background and turning the screen brightness down too. On days where I had to be stuck on campus all day, I constantly had to think about where the power outlets were and I was forced to put my device in battery saver mode. This can extend battery life to about 7 hours, but this stops all background processes including OneDrive syncing which I need all the time. One good thing at least is that the charger is really compact so it's nice to carry around in your bag and it's pretty quick to charge. The Surface Connect port is a magnetic one much like the classic MacBook Max safe so your Surface Go won't get destroyed if you trip on the cable. Speaking of Surface Connect, the two other ports on this thing includes a USB-C port and a headphone jack. There are no classic USB 2.0 or 3.0 ports so you may need to buy some dongles for your printers or flash drives. The biggest part of answering the main question is the price. Starting at $399, the Surface Go starts at a really good price tag, especially considering the money you have to pay for any other laptop with this level of build quality. I should also mention that any Windows device that's 10 inches or smaller gets the Office Mobile Suite for free, so the Surface Go also has a sweet software package for students. However, to make the Surface Go your main laptop for school, you're going to need the $129 signature type cover and maybe the $99 Surface Pen 2. So that's about $630 which is way more than the advertised price, but it's still a good price for a student budget. Look, I definitely have some problems with the Surface Go, but in the end, I do think that it's worth it for students, especially since you won't be getting this level of quality and versatility at this price tag. But this only applies to those that can really benefit from this flexible form factor and knows the limits of the battery and the processor. If you're willing to save a little more, there's a few powerful and pretty good looking laptops in the $700 to $800 range as well, 
but if you're fixed on the $600 budget, this is a good choice. Well that's going to do it for this video and thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments or on my social if you're planning on picking up the Surface Go. It's a pretty interesting device so I'd love to talk more about it. As always, if you like this, it'd be great if you can leave a thumbs up and if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. Thanks again and I'll see you guys on the next one.